Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 17th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In the past, I talked a lot about malicious packages in Python's pip ecosystem or the Node.js NPM ecosystem, but well, they're not alone when it comes to malicious packages. Researchers from Aqua Nautilus did publish some work looking into malicious modules in the PowerShell gallery. PowerShell gallery is maintained by Microsoft and as the name suggests, does contain uh, PowerShell packages. So lots of useful tools here that you can download, but not every package that you find is actually useful. Some of them are outright malicious and it appears that some attackers have discovered good old tricks like uh, type of squatting can be used in order to trick users to download their malicious package. And it doesn't help that developers don't always sort of adhere to the informal conventions when it comes to package naming. The researchers here point out that many, many packages that deal with Azure start the name with AC dot. And there is a very popular package called AC table, well, without the dot. Now, they as a test uploaded a package AC dot table, which would sort of more match the more common uh, convention here. And of course, it was accepted, it was published and made available for download. Aqua did publish this particular package with a callback so they could detect if it was actually being used. And yes, they immediately did notice uh, multiple organizations downloading and using this typo squatted version of AC table. So just like with Python, Node.js or any language that offers a repository like this where anybody can upload uh, packages. Well, uh, be sure that you know what you're downloading, be careful. And in particular, the type of squatting part here is something that is avoidable if you are careful and uh, that has been abused in pretty much any language. And one often overlooked part of security is the need to keep accurate times. A lot of security features depend on knowing what time it is, like, for example, figuring out if a TLS certificate is valid, but also replay protections, protocols like Kerberos and such do rely on a properly synchronized time. In order to improve time synchronization and make it uh, actually more secure, Microsoft introduced a feature back in 2016 known as secure time seeding. The trick here is that uh, Microsoft basically connects via TLS to a number of servers for which the TLS certificates are actually part of the Windows operating system. So in these cases, you don't really need to verify whether or not the certificate is actually still valid. And then they're using signed timestamps, like you have them in the online certificate status protocol in order to get a reasonable estimate of what the current time is to essentially sort of bootstrap the time synchronization process. But it appears that uh, multiple users over the last few years have reported errors in this initial sort of bootstrap process where the initial time being synchronized by the system is days, sometimes months off from the real time, causing significant issues. Microsoft doesn't really have a solution for this. They uh, acknowledge that this may happen, but since the entire process is somewhat random the way it's sort of designed, uh, they basically aren't sort of able to really reproduce this. So uh, this is an issue that you should be aware of if you do see these sudden time ju jumps in Windows Server, also Windows 10, 11, uh, then uh, double check and well, uh, make sure that you keep sort of an eye on what current time your systems are keeping. 
And CoolFans has a blog post documenting a significant increase in the number of targeted attacks involving QR codes. Now, these are not QR codes that are sort of pasted in random public spaces. Instead, these are QR codes that arrive as an email. And the goal here is to essentially bypass mail scanners and trick the victim into following the URL encoded in the QR code. It usually then redirects them to a malicious site via Bing. So Bing sort of being used as an initial hop here in order uh, to again uh, fool some of the initial scanners that may be looking at the URL. Interesting to see sort of uh, this sudden and significant increase in particular in targeted attacks. So uh, these are not so much random attacks, uh, but apparently targeting specific industries, in particular the energy industry. And given that we have a number of actively exploited and recently patched sort of Citrix ADC vulnerabilities, Mandiant now published yet another uh, scanner to not only detect if uh, your Citrix ADC system is properly patched, but also to look for common indicators of compromise left behind by the attacks against uh, these Citrix ADC systems that are currently uh, being uh, conducted. So uh, definitely run the tool if you're using Citrix ADC and even more important, keep it patched. Sadly, I kind of feel like I'm probably talking to the people who aren't necessarily the target audience for a tool like this, who are sort of aware already of uh, these issues with uh, these Citrix systems. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for recommending this podcast uh, to your friends. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.